What up, y'all? It's your Mr. Dan Tambray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, April 8th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Dave Bautista is a cop who suddenly recruits an Uber driver portrayed by Commandant Johnny in the first trailer for the upcoming action comedy Stuber. The clip released on Sunday features Bautista demanding that Johnny drive him around Los Angeles as he hunts down the Kenwood. Najani gets thrown into an action-packed adventure that involves criminals, explosions, and his character Stu learning to be brave in the face of certain danger. Stuber, uh, from director Michael Douse, based off a script by Tipper Clancy, is set to arrive in theaters on July 12th. Ico Wyas, Nally Morales, Billy Giplin, Jimmy Tratto, Mir Servino, and Karen Gillian also star in the movie. Batista was also featured on Sunday's ending his WWE in-the-ring career at WrestleMania 35, where he faced off against Triple H in a no-holds-barred match. Former cast member Jason Sudeikis revived his Joe Biden impression on this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live. The sketch shows Sudeikis is the former vice president and possible 2020 presidential contender as he meets with campaign advisors and undergoes sensitivity training. Sagan minds for laughs how women have accused him of making them feel uncomfortable with his unsolicited touching. It opens with advisors played by Cicely Strong and Kenan Thompson discussing how Biden is a good guy who is behind the times and likely upset by the criticism he has been receiving. The door opens and Biden bursts through going straight to the man and woman and hugging them. Thompson says, Joe, it's all about all the touchy-feely stuff. Strong says, if you're really going to run in 2020, you have to change the way you interact with women. Biden says, you guys know that I'm a tactical politician, right? I'm a hugger. I'm a kisser, and I'm a little bit of a sniffer. But the last thing I ever want to do is offend anyone. Kay McKinnon arrives to conduct the sensitivity training session, and Biden immediately goes over to her and presses his forehead to hers. He then starts to dance before McKinnon explains how to improperly greet a woman, suggesting he simply shake her hand. McKinnon brings in Leslie Jones so he can practice being appropriate and professional. But Jones is thrilled to see Obama's granddaddy, hugs him, slaps his buttocks, and promises to vote for him. Biden says, thank you, I love you, baby. The sketch ends with Biden saying, let's hug it out, America. What would you say? Biden and some woman in 2020, right? In another political theme segment called A Day in the Life, Theresa May, McKinnon plays the British Prime Minister who is sad by the media coverage and voter reaction to her handling of Brexit. Jones scowl at her as she walks down the street. A car splashes a mud poodle on her, a bird poops on her lunch, and she awkwardly tries to dance. Meanwhile, Sarah Borellas sits at her piano and belts out the ballad, She Used to Be Mine. It ends with May walking, uh, waking up from a delightful dream in which she waltzes with Winston Churchill, played by host Kit Harrington, and solves all the United Kingdom's woes to hear a TV reporter say, Theresa May is simply not in control of this process. May says, well, fuck you, at least I'm trying. Meanwhile, Kit Harrington's wife, Rose Leslie, and Game of Thrones co-stars Amelia Clark and John Bradley appeared in the audience to ask questions when Harrington hosted this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live. Harrington was doing his monologue when Amelia Clark, who plays the nearest, his character Jon Snow's love interest, as if he remembers when they had sex in the previous episode of the medieval dragon drama. Harrington says, yes, I do. Clark asks with an enormous grin, Did you know they filmed that? Bradley, who plays John Psychic Sam, wants to know if Harrington will still hang out with him now that filming has ended. Bradley offered, What about next Tuesday? I could come around by 6 a.m. Harrington replied, I'm actually busy by Tuesday. Um, He responds, Wow, people are right. You've changed. SNL cast member Pete Davidson also appeared dressed as the show's villain, The Night King, and wondered aloud if everyone hates him. The segment ends with Leslie who played John, John's wife, Ygret, before she was killed off on Game of Thrones. Leslie voiced her concerns over their real-life finances now that the show was done. Leslie says, You keep telling me I'm the king of the North. We can order Uber Eats every night. Harrington is short, honey. Don't worry, we'll be okay. I'll make my jewelry. The eighth and final season of Game of Thrones is set to debut on HBO on April 14th. 
Adam Sandler is set to host Saturday Night Live on May 4th for the first time in his career. Sandler, who joined us in 1990 as a writer before being featured on the sketch comedy series from 1991 to 1995, will be joined by musical guest Shawn Mendes. The official Twitter account for SNL announced on Friday. SNL producer Lauren Michael said a statement, We're happy to welcome Adam back to SNL on what is sure to be a special night. Sandler announced in March a new North American comedy tour that is set to kick off on May 31st at the Treasured Island Amphitheater in Minneapolis, before wrapping up June 30th at the St. Augustine Amphitheater in St. Augustine, Florida. The tour comes after Sandler released on Netflix a new comedy special titled 100% Fresh. Sandler was featured doing stand-up, telling real-life stories, performing original songs, and paying tribute to the late Chris Farley, who also starred on SNL. You is adding Melanie Field and Magna Apekwix to its season. Netflix announced in a tweet Thursday, Field and Apekwix will appear in season two of the psychological thriller series, which stars Penn Badgley as Joe Goldberg. The post reads, at, uh, at you, Netflix has added two recurring roles for season two. Melanie Field as Sunrise, a stay-at-home mommy blogger raising a toddler with her partner Lucy, and Magna Apekwix as Sandy, a woman from Joe's past. Epinequis is an actress known for the ABC family series Kyle XY, the sci-fi show Caprica. Confirmed the news on Instagram. She wrote, Stoked to be able to share. I'll be recurring on the second season of You. To be a fan on the show uh, before booking a part of it is beyond awesome and sauce and donut bites. Hashtag Netflix You. The Alliance has field summarized as a new age wellness aficionado who lives with her partner and child in a gorgeous Venice Beach home. Epinequiz Sandy has a restless spirit and has been beaten up by life. You is based on the Caroline Kepnitz novel of the same name. Season 2 is loosely based on the author's book, In Bodies, which follows Joe's romance with aspiring chef Love Quinn, played by Victoria Pederet. Season 1 debuted on Lifetime before its release on Netflix in, November, in December. The show was a hit on Netflix, reaching nearly 40 million views in its first four weeks on the streaming site. Field is known for playing Heather Chandler on Heathers and recently appeared on Shrills. Benekowitz portrayed Andy Jensen on Cal XS and Lacey Rand in Caprica. Hannah Brown wants to prove that she's more than a beauty queen in a new promo for The Bachelorette Season 15. The clip released on Twitter Friday features Brown walking through a forest as she dramatically rips apart a white gown and tosses aside a beauty queen sash. Brown is surrounded by tall trees and a number of roses as You Don't Own Me by Grace plays. The promo says, think you know her, think again. She's here to find fierce love. The caption for the video reads, The Bachelorette Season 15 is set to premiere on ABC on May 13th. Brown was named the next Bachelorette during the season 23 finale of The Bachelor in March. She competed on the show, which ended with Colton Underwood entering into a relationship with Cassie Randolph. Brown previously said about becoming the next Bachelorette, I think love is supposed to be fun, and so I want fun and I want adventures. I don't know where I'm going yet, and I so I love surprises, but I want to have fun and go on some amazing adventures. Cast members for the superhero ensemble movie Avengers Endgame will appear throughout next week on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Book this guest on the late night chat show are Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Paul Rudd, Chris Hemsworth, Nina Guerrera, Jeremy Renner, and Don Cheetah, ABC said in a news release. The movie, which follows 2018's Avengers Infinity War, is set to for a theatrical release on April 26. It takes place after the villain Thanos, played by Josh Brolin, appears to have wiped out half of all existence, including several Avenger team members. A clip released this week shows Iron Man, played by Downey Jr., reuniting with Captain America, played by Chris Evans, for the first time since they battled each other in 2016's Captain America Civil War. Other members of the Avengers team spotted in the most recent Endgame preview are Thor, played by Hemsworth, Captain Marvel, played by Brie Larson, Black Widow, played by Johansson, Ant-Man, played by Rudd, Hawkeye, played by Renner, Bruce Banner, Hulk, played by Mark Ruffalo, War Machine, played by Cheetah, Rocket, played by Bradley Cooper, and Nebula, played by Karen Gillian. Comedian Senator the Entertainer is scheduled to host a one-hour special for CBS called Lip Sick to the Rescue. Expected to air later this year, the show is inspired by the recent viral trend in which first responders share lip sync videos on social media and challenge other police, fire, and rescue departments to do the same. 
Videos may be submitted for the television special until April 12th. Robert Horowitz, the president of Juma Entertainment, said in a statement, when CBS first approached us with the idea for a special, we had no idea how deep the, vo the value or the vault of was of lip sync challenge videos. Soon, we uncover video after video, quickly realizing this phenomenon spreads to the first responder departments in all 50 states. What made me believe we had a hit on our hands was the incredible performances and production value each video seemed to have. CBS announced in January that a renewed set at the entertainer's sitcom The Neighborhood for a second season. The comedian was honored with the star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame in July. Giancarlo Esposito, Adrian Barbeau, and Tobin Bell have signed up to star in the first episode of the horror anthology series Creep Show. The Walking Dead director Greg Nictero will serve as Creep Show's showrunner. He will also direct the premiere episode Grey Matter, which is based on the Stephen King's 1973 story of the same name. The tale earned widespread notoriety in 1978 when it was included in King's Night Shift collections of short stories. Creep Show is expected to air on Shudder, AMC's supernatural and horror streaming service. Um, Nick Tarrow said in the statement, Between Salem's Lot, Pet Cemetery, and The Stand, I've always found his stories rich and relatable characters forced into supernatural situations beyond their control. The everyday person's primal fears. Visualized gray matter for Creep Show with the help of Adrian, John Carlo, and Tobin was about as good as it can get for a horror fan from Pittsburgh. Barbeau starred in the 1982 horror anthology movie Creep Show, which King wrote and George A. Romero Helm. Sequels Creep Show 2 and Creep Show 3 followed in 1987 and 2007. A Broken Skins alum, Jack O'Connell, is set to star in the BBC adaptation of Ian McGuire's mystery adventure novel, The North Water. Andrew Hay who credits includes Lean on Pete, Looking In, Weekend, wrote and will direct a four-part thriller, which takes place in the 19th century in the United Kingdom and the ice flows of the, uh, the Arctic. O'Connell will play Patrick Sumner, a disgraced S. Army surgeon who signs up as a ship direct, uh, doctor on a whaling expedition to the Arctic, BBC News release says. He will act opposite the previously announced Colin Farrell, who will play the Admiral Harpuno Henry Drax. Hague said in a statement, Jazz, Jack is a... Fiercely instinctual actor who brings nuance and complexity to every character he plays. Can't wait to see what he brings to Practice Summer. Uh, film is slated to begin in the fall. It was a golden night for Casey Mudgrave's Keith Urban and Dan Plus Shay Sunday Hotel Home New Hardware for the 54th Annual Academy of Country Music Awards at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Hosted by country music icon Reba McIntyre. Uh, country Music's Party of the Year saw Musgraves continue her winning streak from the Grammy Awards, taking home Female Artist of the Year over a pack of nomination pools that included Carrie Underwood and Ashley McBride. Her Golden Hour album also beat Eric Church's Desperate Man, Chris Stapleton's From a Room Volume 2, Dan Plus Shea's eponymous album for Album of the Year. Dan Plus Shea, who entered the night with six nominations, will get their turn at the lectern. However, as their song Tequila beat out Monks Graves' Space Cowboy for Song of the Year. The two some song also won Single of the Year, while the pair took home Duo of the Year. Keith Urban, who was accompanied by his actress wife Nicole Kimmon, added a 10th ACM award as he won Entertainer of the Year over Chris Stapleton, Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, and Kenny Chesney. The New Zealand Australian music sensation also performed his claim Burton during the evening and also saw Thomas Redd. Uh, rock out with the new single Look What God Gave Her. The Journey Neighbor would take to the stage not only to perform but to accept the coveted Male Artist of the Year award, beating out Urban, Luke Combs, and Stapleton, who tied uh, with Dan Plus Shea for most nominations with six but failed to take home a single statuette. Aldean, who lost out the Entertainer of the Year and Music Event of the Year awards, didn't go empty handed as he was named the ACM's Dick Clark Artist of the Decade Award. Brandon Ray also received the Aflac AMC Lifting Lives honor from Carly Pierce during the event for his impact on healing others through his music. On uh, honor, uh, he said in a tweet, receiving the Aflac ACM Lifting Lives honor was a moment I'll never forget. Other big winners include Dirk Bentley featuring Brothers Osborne for Music Event of the Year with Burning Man, Old Dominion who won the Group of the Year, Ashley McBride who won New Female Artist of the Year, and Combs who won New Male Artist of the Year. Solange has uh, exited the 2019 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, the, the annual music event announced on Twitter. 
Michelle said on Sunday, due to major production delays, the launch will unfortunately no longer be performing at this year's festival. She sends her sincere apologies and looks forward to performing at Coachella in the future. Solange was announced as a performing artist at Coachella in January. The event is set to take place at the Empire Polo Club in Indio, California, from April 12th to the 14th, and then from April 19th to the 21st. Ariana Grande, Childish Campino, and Tame Impala are the headlining acts. Solange surprised fans in March with the sudden release of her fourth studio album, Tell When I Get Home. The 19-track project features Solange collaborating with the likes of Tyler, the Creator, Gucci Man, Pharrell Williams, The Dream, Earl Sweatshirt, Metro Booming, Scarface, Cassie, and Devin the Dude, among others. Rapper Nav's Bad Habit is the number one album in the United States. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 album charts day at Saturday is Ariana Grande's Thank You Next, followed by Juice World's Death Race for Love at number three, Rich the Kids' The World Is Yours at number two, uh, the two at number four, and Triple X Tenacion's Question Mark at number five. Right up the top tier are the soundtrack to the film A Star Is Born at number six, a, a Boogie with the Hoodies, Hoodie S Z N at number seven, Post Malone's Beer Bongs and Bentley's at number eight, the soundtrack to the movie Bohemian Rhapsody at number nine, and the soundtrack to the Motley Crue biopic The Dirt at number ten. The Superhero Adventure Shazam is the number one movie in North America, earning $53.5 million in receipts this week in box office mojo announced Sunday. Coming in number two is Pet Cemetery with $25 million, followed by Dumbo number three with $18.2 million, Us at number four with $13.8 million, and Captain Marvel number five with $12.7 million. Right now the top tier are The Best of Enemies at number six with $4.5 million, Five Feet Apart at number seven with $3.7 million, Unplanned at number 8 with $3.2 million, Runder Park at number 9 with $2 million, and How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World at number 10 with $1.96 million. And that is your entertainment report for Monday, April 8th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.